It's still the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to head straight to our first major conversation right here. Now, at this point, we'll be looking at the issue of parenting. We're looking at um, education and all that surrounds, you know, our children. And this is following the issue of the sex tape and scandal of Chrisland School. But of course, we have Justin here. Yeah, good morning, how Missy. I'm doing okay. Uh, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> it's good to have you join me. It's all right. Yeah, today could have been a very wonderful day, but it will still be a good day. You don't I have understand. to be, you know, no. just trying to maneuver through Lagos and all. I but understand. thank God I'm here all the same. Yeah. So, like Messi said, we'll be looking at um, the fallout of uh, what happened at uh, uh, the Chrisland uh, School when the, the children went to Dubai. But we'll look at the angle of our parenting, education, upbringing, and of course, all the latest twists and updates on that particular incident. And we have um, a guest uh, uh, joining us this morning. And uh, let's make welcome um, Betsy. Abba, uh, she is joining us. She is a journalist. Uh, she is uh, a women's and um, uh, child um, advocate, and she will be giving her own perspective concerning all of the issues on the show this morning. Good morning to you, Betty. She is also the founder, executive director of Sea Hope Nigeria. Thanks for joining us, Betty Abba. Thank you so much. The pleasure. Yes. Let's just um, dive uh, right through it. Uh, you know, in our pre-chat uh, yesterday, we were talking about um, the development uh, when uh, it was uh, still fresh and uh, how Obi Franklin posted and was saying that um, a child of 10 was raped. You know, since then, Chrisland School uh, has been closed. All its uh, branches in the state has been closed and uh, there are more revelations uh, concerning what has happened. Um, a sex tape was uh, posted all through uh, Twitter and reactions have been trailing all of that. But let's talk right now. A lot of people have said that um, uh, it is the issue from the home front. A lot of people have said that uh, it is uh, the, an issue of um, upbringing. And some have even said that it is a case of um, education. Let's just get your general perspective concerning all that has happened so far, Betty. Thank you very much. I think I would like to, uh, as much as possible, see it from a professional angle and then um, that is to say in all of this what should be um, at the back of our mind should be in the interest of a minor or the minors that are involved in this a very unfortunate um, incident um we we'll blame the parents because um i understand uh, that the girl even has a, um, a, a, a i think a, a social media a handle Forgotten the name of the place, and she has over 500 videos. Many of the videos shot at school, shot in the school, and all of that. So, where were the parents um, in all of this? I saw there is a failure on the part of parenting, no doubt. And then, also look at it from the angle of um, Christland School. They never handled this case well, and a lot of scandals have trailed Christland, unfortunately, in the past, which they never handled well. In the first place, why did they leave? Minors unattended to um, on a foreign trip. They went to Dubai, and then these children had the liberty to roam around in hotels. Uh, girls going to boys' room and all of that. Why did that happen? And then when this unfortunate incident uh, came to light before the school, um, I understand that um, from the parents, from the mother's um, explanation, they never knew they were kept in the dark. And then these children were take uh, the girl was taken on a for a pregnancy test about two or three times without the parents um, knowledge or consent and then uh, they resorted to um, stigmatization they resorted to blackmail they resorted to threatening the girl to keep mute and all of that i i am not i keep asking who are the handlers of uh, christland school who are the advisors of christland school we saw a very scandalous case that happened uh, about two uh, a few years ago, a, a teacher that was accused of um, raping a, a two-year-old girl or sexually molesting the two-year-old girl, child defilement. And the school went all the way to hire a senior advocate uh, of Nigeria, a lawyer, a big lawyer, and spent millions of naira, obviously, to defend this teacher. At the end of the day, he was convicted to 60-year imprisonment by the Lagos State government after there were clear evidence that he actually did this. So, who are the advisors of Krishna? How come they are not able to handle cases like this? And also to say that um, the rest of the society, we also fail our children, we fail this girl, we fail as many people as were involved in that uh, scandalous uh, sex thing. Who were the boys? 
who are the people that put it out, that put the video out? And why are we as adults, as standards by? Why are we sharing it? Why are we doing a mobbing? Why are we mobbing the girl? Instead of seeing how we can offer help to these girls, she needs help. Her parents need help. The, 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 the boys that were involved in this, in this thing need help. I understand the girl just ten year, a 10 year old girl. You can imagine the level of moral decadence of the girl and every other person involved. How and where were the parents of these children in all of this? Where is the school in all of this? Because the, that, the, the, the entire act, the entire action did not start at that uh, Dubai hotel, a uh, sex tape or sex uh, uh, scenario. It, it's, been, it's probably something that has been ongoing for years. And I understand that many of these elite schools, the teachers do not have, cannot correct the students because they, they, are, they are from very big and influential homes. And the school will not allow the teachers to, to, to correct them So because they don't want to lose their customer. When you are running a, a, an educational um, institution, you are not just uh, uh, in business. You are there to mend lives. You are there to train generations. So what is the duty of care of Priestland School in raising, raising these children? The same way we saw what happened at Dowen College. What is the duty of care for this uh, school that they will not correct the young people? That they will allow them to, 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 to do whatever they want and their teachers are not in a position to correct them. So I'm happy that the Lagos State Government has shut down the school so that they can have a review of the, their fundamentals the reason, their motivation for setting that school up in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that um, maybe at the end of the day, uh, the school will be better for it. The children will be better for it. And even the rest of the society will be better for it. The people that are busy sharing and um, sharing this uh, very terrible video. I haven't watched it and I don't intend to watch it. But I think we should be less judgmental. We should look at solutions. Thank you. All right, so um, let's also look at the fact that we're in a technology-driven period or age where you have technology, technology has taken over, and you cannot also separate that from the fact that these kids need to learn. So uh, what do we now do? So technology backed up with smartphones uh, that has access to this uh, children's hand. Uh, how, how do we now um, control all of this in, in the case of raising our children? It's extremely hard. It's extremely hard. The way you are raising a like, student in this age, you have to go the extra mile to ensure that you are not raising um, uh, a, a children who contributes more to the moral decadence of the society. And you're not raising children that will give you heartache and probably make you die for your time. You have to go the extra mile. And uh, over time, their the parental controls over phones, over devices. How many parents have been careful enough to even study this in order to apply it? We've had cases of children who are addicted to pornography, to pornographic sites. We've had cases of, um, some of those cases that uh, we've handled in the past is because they, they watch these things on their parents' phone. So what example are the parents setting for their children who have young, impressionable children? Uh, persons around you and you are putting pornographic uh, videos on your phone. You are putting no, no. very graphic videos on your phone and this student can access it. So uh, it has to, there has to be a level of control over the, I mean very strict control over what they can view on their phones. And many, many children that are even camping for this day, the first place they are not supposed to be given phones because it's something that can end up being very destructive to their growth, to their personal growth, development, and their morality. So at what age do we give food? We allow children to handle food, not just basic food, smartphones with all the pictures and devices where they can accept very damaging sites. So parents have to have a control. Parents have to, from time to time, look around, look around for the children, the, 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 the students or friends they keep. We have to eavesdrop on their um, conversation. We have to keep talking to them. We have to just be there for our children. We have, just have to, to ensure that we continue monitoring them because we're in perilous times, as we say. More than ever before, the internet has a, a, an overwhelming influence on all our lives, and children are not left out. And the, uh, the, the access to pornographic sites, to violence sites, is one of the, the fallouts of this, um, uh, the, 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 the impact of the internet. And so children, uh, parents have to have the control. And then they have to put their, their children in schools where they can learn and also be of good behavior. As one we say, schools will say, 
They, they brought you up not just educationally, they did you qualify to get the certificate because you proved yourself to be qualified intellectually and also morally. Which schools are we putting our children? Are we putting them because they are high sounding schools, schools, elite schools? So that when you tell people, our parents gathering that say, your child is in Christland, your child is in Bowen, your child is in a uh, British American, this, everybody will clap for you, uh, hold you in high regard. We should investigate schools. What, how are those schools run? Do they have some moral fabrics running in the veins? In, 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 in the administration of those schools, or they are just schools for spoiled brats, for spoiled kids. You just want your children to be there. So if you want the best for your children, you have to go all the way. You have to be involved in their lives, in the moral standards they keep, in the schools they go to. Everything about your children, you really have to be. You cannot be distant. You cannot Betty, be distant Betty by Abbe. Your, because you are raised in generation. And what, however those children turn out to be tomorrow, your, uh, uh, it will be, I mean, if you, if you raise up children that are criminals, that are contributing to moral decadence in the society, you'll be questioned, just like the parents of these girls are being questioned as to their parental, uh, to her parental upbringing. But let's so, just, let's just stay that, with, let's just stay with them. Um, take more control and be more serious about them. Um, want their children accept the friends they keep, the schools they go to. They have to be involved in Betty, their life. Mrs. Betty Yabe, let's still stay with the issue of um, technology and the fact that children now have access to smartphones. I mean, you have mentioned that prior to this time, you have children who have access to their parents' phone and some of these devices would have some pornographic content. But it's gone way beyond that. Children now have, a lot of children, I would not say all because that would be hasty generalization. A lot of children have access, you know, not all entirely, to smartphones. And you know how the OS of these phones are being run. These days you go online, things just pop up. Things that you don't um, request for are already at your face. So um, that's on the one hand. And on the other hand as well, should we come to a point where we have developers? And this might not necessarily be for us as a country because not that we are developing all of this, but should we get to a point where we say developers should begin to consider um, creating phones or developing phones that would be children friendly running from the OS with you know friendly apps and forbidden content for children because as long as you have a time that we're in the children most times are expected to have assignment and what have you and there's always need for them to you know make reference to the internet so um, what do you think in all of this should parents not give their children phone do you think, I think that there are already provisions for that? Sorry, there are already there are already provisions for that. I know that um, I've read a lot about uh, phones um, having devices. Um, I don't have a child that is old enough to use the phone yet, but um, I know I understand there are uh, phones that have parental control that um, your child cannot access so many sites because you put a lock on them. And there are sites if they go to, you get a signal on your own phone. And even with uh, access to um, TV, you put parental control and they cannot go beyond some um, stations, some um, programs. So they, they, those provisions are already there. They actually are already there. It's just for the parents uh, to make use of them. But then uh, the fact is that parents, it's impossible for parents to be 100% in control, uh, especially because children go to school and some of these children come to school with smartphones. And some of their parents are actually very uh, careless, reckless, I must say, and they are no fact. And so they cannot for their view on their friend's phone. So there's actually a limit to th that control. And in that aspect, to say, as a parent, you have to set the right standard in your home. You have to be an example to your children. If you watch those things, those, your children will automatically watch them uh, at your back. And if yeah. you don't leave a, uh, as a man, if you bring a woman, and you know some men bring women to the house, in the presence of their children, you are setting a very terrible precedence for those children. They are going to live that way. They're going to believe that that is normal. That is a way of life. And so we, we parents just have to try the most that they can. And then the parents, apart from putting strict control on phones, 
make sure that their children go to clubs where they are mentored, where they, they are given orientation about how to live a positive life, about how to live a purpose-driven life. A children's camps, uh, clubs. I always say that I'm a product of uh, the Sunday school club in, from the Methodist Church where I grew up. And those, the moral standards that were instituted, the moral standards that were taught to us, everywhere I go in the world, I hold those standards very dear to my heart. They define my life's principle. And, and so when children are ingrained as, uh, from a very young age with those principles, it's extremely, extremely hard for them to, um, to deviate from me. So as parents, we have to do all we can, expose children to teachings that will uh, improve their lives, that will enrich their lives, take them to children's camp, take them to mentoring program, and it will, uh, a whole, it will bring about a whole lot of change in their lives, apart from ensuring that you have control of their phones and ensure that they have as less access to uh, phones, um, smartphones, or TV programs that will corrupt your mind as, as much as possible. I've been in a home, um, I think sometime at about 15, 16 years ago, I was in the US and I went to um, a visit uh, uh, a Nigerian parent's uh, home. I went to their children's home. I think I needed to make use of the computer, so I was using their children's computer. And there were a lot of pornographic uh, sites on that uh, on that computer that they had opened. I, I was alarmed because they were just teenagers, 10 years, 12 years, and they had all these pornographic porn sites open on their phone, on their computer. So I drew the, the attention of their mother. I said, look at what your children are, work, are watching on their... On the, on the, um, in the site they are exploring on their TV, on their computer. And she just shrugged. She just uh, she was so dismissive. I can't forget that. So I mean and that those were children. So I wonder at this level they'll be in their early in their twenties or maybe late twenties now or early mid twenties. I imagine the level of decadence that they, they will be at All right, uh, okay. right now if something had not happened along the way. So I think children and parents, like I say, have to be more involved. You try the best you can and leave the rest to go. But it must be said that you have tried. All right, Betty, uh, let's talk more. You've talked about, uh, you know, uh, the parents getting uh, more or better involved in the activities and, uh, you know, all the contents, you know, that their children consume. Let's take it one step further. On, on whose book, on whose shoulder does it really stop uh, when we talk about the issue of uh, you know, uh, sex education right now? Because you will agree with me that uh, what the children did you know, is actually a, the act of immoral content. And um, we don't even know how they got there, how they were able to do or get to the point of um, you know, recording all of that. But right now, don't you think that um, if these children were better educated on what to do, what not to do, you know, and then um, how they should go about this thing. So if they approach that, don't you think we'll be having less problems in our society? But whose book does it really rest? Is it on the school, the teachers? Is it the parents, uh, the mothers, uh, the, the fathers? Because most times uh, parents actually shy away, you know, when it comes to sex education. How do you reason all of that? Yes, I think that first of all, it has to do with the parents because that's uh, the first um, base for the child. So parents have uh, a responsibility to give sex education to their children as early as four or five years in child-friendly and appropriate languages. Um, so uh, parents have the first and fundamental responsibility and also teachers. Some schools shy away from sex education and at the end of the day, it does not all go away for anyone. So, and they have to do it in languages that are appropriate. But, but I'm not even sure that this has to do, this particular incident has to do with sex education. It's about children that were let loose on their own to explore the world, the immoral world, so to say. And there were no checks whatsoever. So, and, um, and, and, and everything is boomeranging. The school is being scandalized. The parents of but, the But, but, but the from, from, from the way you're coming, and all that's that. it. Point about children being let loose on their own, parents running to earn a livelihood to make as much money as possible, and not looking the way of their children, and not offering advice, and not offering any form of restraint because you have money, or children can do anything. Look at what happened in Dowen. The they, 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 they children were so, I mean, they were so big, they were controlling their teachers, they were calling them by their first name, they were sending them on errands. 
to withdraw money for them to do this because they are got into a state that nobody could control them. So why did you send them to school? Your children cannot be controlled. Uh, and so if, if, you, if you need teachers and the school uh, education when they try to correct your children, then why did you bother to uh, send them out in the first place? So it's about lack of parental control. It's about the absence of parenting. And that is what we are seeing in this case, especially the rich and influential parents not being present in the lives of their children. So sex education is important, but in this particular uh, case, I think the children have over exposure to sex education. Um, okay, so um, I think uh, that would be addressed. I, I, I don't know how. Um, I don't know how that is when you say that the children have uh, over exposure to sex education, or the children have decided to discover loose. by themselves because i don't know if they are being taught about these things we know the culture that we are a part of a culture where is it taboo to say the word sex even in church and we can't even call parts of the bunny uh, the parts of the body they are sensitive parts of the body even in educating our children we don't tell them that you know this is part of a body so we begin to look for names to call them that's because we don't want to sound unholy just like you have the ear every other part of the body is part of the body so it starts from there but from your um, perspective it sounds like we are we are actually relegating and shifting the responsibility to the school uh, we, we seem to be moving it now to the school that, oh, the school had failed at this, the school had failed at that. We understand that the school has a role to play. But let's even stay back with the home. In all of this, people say that this is just poor parenting and this is, is totally on the fact that parents have not had time in the chase of, you know, the rat race that we are all in. Parents no longer have time and, you know, pay attention. And for some elites, uh, it, it's no longer business. People no longer check what's happening, uh, going on, you know, in their homes. Accountability is no longer the system. So I would like you again to say this, that is this really, um, a, is this really a case of the school's failure or is it a failure from the home and parenting? No, no, I, I, actually, I think we are, we are on the same page on this. I actually said that is a failure fundamentally, first of all, of the parents, is the failure of parenting. And if this, the parents were not present in the lives of these children. When you, I, I actually, I've worked with children since age 14, and uh, all my life, my life is, my life actually revolves around them, children. And when you see children that are from homes, that are, uh, where they receive good training, Whose parents are present in their lives? You will, you will just know within 30 minutes when you stay, sorry, you already know that child's history by the by the comportment, by the attitude, you already know. So um obviously uh, when we see cases like this, is first of all a failure of parenting. But what happens is that most parents, when they are not present in the lives of the children, when they are too busy to be present, to have any form of control because they are busy for spending money, they shift everything to the school. And sometimes the school tries in their best way as much as possible to correct, to bring up these children, to mold them as much as possible. And sometimes they succeed. But um, in, 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 in some cases, the children are just completely out of control, that the school have no control and they cannot help whatsoever. And especially when the school also relegates its responsibility, because in all of these, the school also has a duty of care. The school, because children actually spend more time in school. So what, what do, do the school perceive to be their duty of care? How are they helping these children to grow, whether the parents are present in their lives or not? So it's a two-way thing. The parents have a role, and um, the, the school also have a role to play. So that when we are, and, 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 but what we've seen in this particular case is there's, a, there's a, an absolute or a near absolute failure on the part of both parents and the all right, Betty. Parents. So they all have to sit up. Like I said, um, my, my position in all of this matter is, can we look for a position? And what the Lagos State Government, the press statement they put out yesterday was just excellent. All right, they um, are focused all right, on Betty. finding solutions, psychosocial support for these children. And that is where it should start. Yeah, still talking about solutions. Uh, let's uh, talk about the ways forward right now. Um, the deed has been done. These children have been exposed. Uh, the girl is in the middle of all of this and also the boys. Now, 
What do we do for these children? How do we begin to maybe restructure their mind? Uh, because uh, somehow they no longer have their own privacy right now. And those boys uh, who could actually go to the extent of recording you know, such an immoral act, uh, how to begin to uh, reform them and so that they actually would live better lives. They're just children and they have a long way to go you know, in building and molding you know, their lifestyle. So how do we help these children? Thank you very much. Um, I think, like I said, I just uh, mentioned earlier, the Lagos State Government has taken the, the right step by shutting down the school so that they can reappraise the entire situation, even the fundamentals of the administration of the uh, Christian school, because of these uh, standards, these historical standards that keep coming out from that school. Uh, because I believe there's a major default, there's a major dysfunction in the administration of Christian school and the motive why they set up that school. They really have to appraise it and maybe the legal state government to help them um, in that process. Uh, so I, I think, first of all, we have to find solution. And the legal state government in the press statement by the uh, Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency said they will provide psychosocial support for the children psychological they'll have uh, psychosocial sessions with the children so because these children need psychological support they are minors whichever way you want to look at it that's why this when this girl stabbed her husband uh, keep poisoning her husband in Kano the uh is it Safi also the best that little 14 year old girl I think that was her husband in Kano some years ago she was treated as a minor she was sentenced to how many years imprisonment and all of that at the end of the day she was uh, she wasn't convicted anymore. She was set free. She was acquitted because she is a minor. So these are children that are in conflict with the law, uh, engaging in that kind of horrible art, and then uh, also putting it out, uh, videoing it and putting it out on social media. And I understand it even uh, attracts 14 years imprisonment. But these are minors, and we cannot apply the same rule to them. What they need is uh, help. Psychological help. So, and I'm really happy that the legal state government has promised to provide that help in the course of their investigating um, this uh, very horrible uh, scenario that we found ourselves in. So, uh, the, first of all, they need that uh, psychological help. Their parents also need help. The parents of the girl need help because the contents are already out. Her name is out in the in public domain and all of that. I guess a picture or, or also. And so, and it's not good, it's extremely damaging. So they need help, and they need all the parenting advice that they can get. And then the school needs us to, uh, to sit up. I'm sure they will, because I keep wondering, who are the advisors of Christian school? Who are the advisors of Christian school? How can your, your a, a baby, a three-year-old girl in your school come up to say, she had been sexually molested by this man over a period of time, and she kept maintaining it even when she got to age four. And then you kept uh, uh, threatening her mother. You kept intimidating her mother. Yeah, he went all the way to hire a senior advocate of Nigeria to defend a pedophile in court. What kind of school are you? What kind of educational institution are you running? What is your duty of care to these children? And I just heard yesterday another terrible news. One of the students of Queensland School impregnated um, a girl in that school, her, his mate. And when they had a, an emergency PTA meeting, the owner, the, the, the head of the school told them, I'm really happy that this does not involve one of my teachers. And so let you push, go and suffer yourself. Can you imagine that? So what is your duty of care? I keep emphasizing right, it. What is your duty of care? So right. I think uh, Queensland school should be investigated. Queensland school should be put on the right path because right now, right, the so fundamentals is actually shaking. It's actually faulty. All right, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, uh, the Lagos State Government is doing um, all the investigations to, so we can get to the root cause. And, uh, you know, if there are sanctions, uh, you know, to be meted out to whoever or to whatever, it should uh, be done. And, of course, uh, the children you know, who are the center of this all, we need to ensure that um, they are safe and, of course, they are, you know, rehabilitated. Once again, we must say a very big thank you to you, Betty Abba. She is the founder, executive director, Sea Hope Nigeria. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thanks. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Bye. All right, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're staying on social issues on the show today. I will take a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at um, the role churches can play in the wake of all of this uh, domestic violence that is plaguing our society. In a moment, to join us again.